Okay, so in this one, we're going to take the same Bach chorale and we're going to take a specific aspect of it and eliminate a few things. And it's actually going to result in a technique that is actually common. Um, and But I hope this method actually helps people understand that technique better because this is a, another way to look at it. Um, and, there, and it's given all kinds of uh, fancy names too. Uh, and we'll discuss that in a second. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and get straight to work. So here's the chorale here. So what happens if we take this, eliminate the melodic minor, and take just the natural minor, and eliminate the five chord, and always use the Picardi third when we use this natural minor and the Picardi third. Use any of the chords of natural minor, but always land on the Picardi third one. Well, this is actually a form of, uh, called borrowing, often called borrowing, or in more complicated terms, sometimes people use the terms negative harmony or uh, modal interchange, but it's all results in the same thing. So, uh, but we're just gonna land on the Picardi third, but and, but, and the rest of the chords we're gonna use as minor. Um, So you see what happened? Every time I landed on the D chord, which would be in D minor, I, I, I used a raised third. And it almost has that Mixolydian flat six sound, but you don't, in Mixolydian flat six, you don't have an F chord and you don't have a B flat, okay? So this is different. You have more chord options. So really this is just borrowing from parallel minor, but let's go through the chords that I did. It's D major, B flat, A minor seventh, D major, okay, B flat, F, C, E diminished, D major, okay, so, I mean, you could look at it as just continuously landing on the one chord of minor with the Picardi third if it helps you understand the borrowing concept, so, you could do something like this, you could walk up with all borrowed chords except for the one Maybe as some kind of transition to D something, I don't know. Um, we're doing this on the spot, so... Um, you... So it has a really, really nice, lovely sound to it. So I'll, I'll play something in that, using that as if it's like a transitional. And maybe do something a little bit of D major, okay. Then go back to the the minor chords, the borrowed minor chords. So you could do something like that, okay? Um, I'm just trying to help you see this concept easier, so I'm just going to play through the chords really slow that I use, just walking up literally through the parallel minor chords, or the minor chords, whichever way you want to look at it, to that Picardi third, then D major six converted to the D minor 6 because there's a common tone and then the 2 diminished to 1 Picardi 3rd 1 if you want to look at it that way as minor Picardi 3rd all the time I'm not really big on absolutes so so what I would do is I just start messing around with the chords of the uh, the minor version of D and then continuously land on that Picardi 3rd 1 just creating chord sequence like this so the only chord that did not fit in there was the Picardi third, uh, raised third one. So let's play, make that musical. Okay, so you can get really, really nice sequences out of this. Uh, so I'd really just practice using all the chords of minor, but always landing on that Picardi third one. And Technically, you've got, you'll, you'll start to master borrowing. But it's a little less functional the way I'm doing it because I'm not relying on any five chord. Remember, I X'd it out at the beginning. We're not using any five, working towards any five to one cadence like you would in traditional functional harmony and borrowing. So it's a little bit different in that aspect. It's not as functional.
I in, in traditional functional harmony, they would actually act, still have you work towards that five to one cadence. And uh, I mean, raise third five to one to uh, either Picardi third one or minor one. So, uh, so if you just practice using that major one with all the chords that would actually belong to Aeolian uh, natural minor, whatever you want to call it, and then no matter what chord you want, you could always go back to that raise third one. So that's a good way to look at borrowing, and it's actually an interesting way to teach it, is to look at it as a constant Picardi third and minor. So that's another way to look at it. So we could actually add to the complexity of explanations of, on borrowing. Um, I mean, we could call it modal interchange, we could call it borrowing, we could call it uh, the um, negative harmony, produces pretty much the same results, all of them. So. Uh, choose whatever now we can say we could say picardi third minor we could always say picardi third minor and add a new term to this so remember everything's subjective so don't take uh well don't get too caught up in arguing about uh music because it doesn't help you make mu better music the only thing that helps you make better music is making music and practicing music not arguing with people so whatever term and explanation works best for you to understand a concept use it but that's another thing I got out of this Bach chorale is we can actually take that uh, whole natural minor and always end up on the Picardi third without a five chord. Okay, so th that's another thing you can gleam out of this and produce different ideas because we're approaching the one chord always in a non-functional way. It's it's more like the concept of borrowing at that at point and whatever term you want to want. Let's so let's let's add to the complexity again. Let's create our own definition and let's call this constant Picardi third one minor. 